Welcome to AM Muscle Maintenance with In Shape Fitness. I'm Coach Kim. Today's podcast is a workout. We are doing a pre-run warm-up together today. It's going to take about 15 minutes. You don't need any equipment. This is a workout designed. It doesn't have to really be a run, but it could be a jog. It could be a, a faster run. It could be a bicycle ride or a hike even. The point is that warming up your body, stimulating the body parts that are going to be put to to work when you're moving your body for an extended period of time do need some stimulation and you need to get your head kind of connected to your body so that your posture is good so that your breathing is in sync with your movements and so that you don't injure yourself or overly fatigue yourself before you you get started and and kind of get into your groove so let's begin with a systems check of your posture and a couple of deep breaths Go ahead and try to stand up tall, get all of the noise of your life out of your head for just a few minutes. As I said, it's going to take about 15 minutes to do this session with me, and you don't need shoes on your feet yet. I do my warm-up routines in my pajamas in the first thing in the morning when I get up in the morning, and, and I talk a little bit about this with almost all of the, the workout podcasts that I do because... I find that it's so much easier to just make the movement part of the day, at least the the stimulating morning movement part of the day, a regimen that happens before anybody else in my house gets up. I get up first. I have a sip of water. I find a spot in my living room. Often, you know, turn on the news and see what crazy things are happening in our world and then maybe put on the coffee and then I spend 10 minutes And these are not super crazy exercises. You don't have to like get a huge sweat on and get your heart rate up and sustain it for 10 minutes or whatever. It's more about a combination of elongating your spine, activating your core, generating oxygenated blood flow out to all of your extremities and deep breathing so that you activate and stimulate your cardiorespiratory system. And then you know, there are some trouble spots with things like running. I'm a a marathon runner. And so your hips, your glutes, your hamstrings, the twist of your trunk, those are sort of unutilized kind of sleepy parts of your body in terms of regular life that benefit from doing a little bit of, of warm up. So you're standing up tall in terms of a postural systems check. You elongate through your spine. Think about that that plumb line that runs down the side of your body. So your gaze is forward, your head is back, your ears and your shoulders make a straight line. Your chest is open. Your arms are hanging down beside your body and your palms are turned out slightly. When your palms face your thighs, face the sides of your of your leg, you can feel, just do a couple of shoulder rolls so that you can turn your arms in turn your hands your palms out and when your palms face your legs your shoulders are a little more forward if you force the thumbs to point almost backwards behind you your 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 palms kind of face out at about a 45 degree angle you'll feel your chest open up a little bit you can push those shoulders back and take a couple of deep breaths. Now inhale through your nose. I talk ad nauseum about the inhaling of the nose. One of my favorite books is a book called Emperor of Scent and it's actually about the perfume industry. I'm so not into high fashion, haute couture and and fancy perfumes and makeups and stuff like that. But the perfume industry, this book about the perfume industry is fascinating because it writes, the, the, the author Chandler Burr writes about the sophisticated piece of equipment that lives inside your face. It's called your nose. And when you inhale through your nose, you filter your the air in and allow the parts of your brain, the executive sophisticated part of your brain to control the respiratory process to a greater degree and thus keep things like panic at bay. Mouth breathing is a direct trigger for the fight or flight syndrome. And when you 
inhale through your nose, you can control your body a little bit better, keep those stress hormones at bay, and allow your body to do the work that it needs to do. Okay, now we're going to move a little bit. The first thing I want you to just do is march, high knee march in place. You're just lifting up one knee, and it's a slow march. It's not like really quick effort because I want your knee to deliberately lift to the parallel level of your hips. So your knee comes up, your knee goes down. The other knee comes up, the other knee goes down. Lift, lower. Lift, lower. Shoulders are back, arms are beside your body. Basic high knee march. Keep that going for another 15 seconds. Keep your abs engaged. Keep your back straight, your tailbone tucked in. Deliberate. Think about showing someone how to march. That's the kind of marching you're doing. Okay, now we're going to make it a little more challenging. So now what I want you to do is you're going to lift up the left foot. The left knee comes up to the hip level again. Only this time, you're going to put the left foot in a diagonal dimension. You're going to put the left foot back down across the the side where the right foot is. So it goes, your knee comes up and then your foot goes down, but over to the right side. So it's an up and over and then back down and back up and then back down to its original starting point on the left side of your body. Left foot up, over to the right, back up, back down on the left side. Then you repeat with the right leg. Right knee comes up, right foot crosses over the left leg and puts in and touches the floor over on the left side of the body, then is back up and then back down on the right side, its starting original starting point. All right, so 30 seconds. This is a crossbody high knee march. That's the best name I've got for it. If you can come up with a good name for this exercise, this warm up, please tell me. You can email me anywhere at bodybyinshape.com or send us a note through the website or through social media. So the crossbody high knee march for another 10 seconds. And then we're going to go down to the floor and activate your core. Last four seconds. Three, two, one. Now squat all the way down to the floor. Walk your body out and down onto your elbows. Hold a plank for 30 seconds. So when you're in a hold plank, a low plank on your elbows, your elbows and your shoulders line up vertically. Your butt should be down. You will automatically feel all of the layers of muscle engage and activate and it's hard and it should be you've got 10 more seconds to go don't make fists with your hands that stimulates those stress hormones so splay your fingers out flat on the floor and now lift your body back up onto your hands walk yourself back to your squatted position and stand all the way back up I want you to march again all right 15 seconds standard march Actually, let's take that up to a skip. So go ahead, you're marching, but now at the top you're going to skip and then you're going to keep on going with your ups, your alternating legs. So high knee skip, high knee skip. And again, pretend, there must be a fire in my neighborhood in Manhattan. If you can hear the sirens, it's because the windows are open, it is a beautiful day in New York City, and I live just by Central Park And there are often sirens. Excellent. All right. Now your high knee march is going to stop and you are going back down to the floor for another plank. This time we're going to make the plank a little more challenging. So go back down into your squatted position. Walk your body back out into your forearm plank, your low plank. Again, elbows and shoulders line up. This time what I want you to do is to corkscrew your hips a little bit. We're going to activate your torso a little bit. The reason I like a little bit of rotation through your torso is because when you're running your and your left foot is planting down onto the ground, guess what? You should be twisting slightly, just slightly, through your pelvis, through your torso. And that is a natural running gait. If there is no rotation through your trunk when you're moving forward in a jog or, uh, you know, a slightly faster run, then your, your gait is slightly off. And we want to, we want to make sure that your 
activating that part of your body so that the fluidity of that natural movement can shine through even if you don't force it when you, uh, when you do get moving. Okay, now you're going to stay on the floor. Now I want you to sit in child's pose for a couple of seconds. Take five deep breaths with your butt sitting right on top of your heels, your body draped over your quads, your fingers are walked way, way, way far away from your head, your elbows are in the air, so you're feeling the stretch through your shoulders, through your back, and you're taking those five deep breaths. We've got just a couple more minutes to go. I wanna make sure that we warm up your butt and that we stretch out a little bit the back of your legs before you get going, your hamstrings and your butt. So you're gonna turn over next after you take those five breaths I want you to turn your body over. Here come more sirens. Onto your back, bend both knees and put your feet on the floor. Excellent. Okay, now your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor. Before you begin to move into hip bridge, double check that your feet face, your toes are facing forward. You don't wanna turn your feet out. You want your feet to be parallel to one another with your ankles and your knees lined up in a straight line. And then you lift up into hip bridge. Now hip bridge is amazing because hip bridge elongates the hip flexors, which are a part of your body that suffers the greatest degree, your butt and your hips uh, and, and your hamstrings from sitting. Hips, butt, hamstrings. Those three muscle groups suffer a great deal from sitting which means that if you want to run, you really need to activate those three parts of your body before you head out because they need that extra blood, that extra attention in order to function properly through the mechanics of jogging, running, even biking and, and, and hiking or whatever. So you're in your hip bridge. Now, if you're relatively strong, make sure that, by the way, you keep your toes down in your hip bridge. If you are pretty strong in hip bridge, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to lift up your left leg and for you to continue holding the hip bridge position or even do a couple of dips with just the right leg. Try that right now because the other aspect of running that makes a huge difference to recreational runners, bucket list marathoners, And people that are just looking to lose some weight to develop a healthy lifestyle through the act of of moving in a, you know, through jogging or running, your right leg, your dominant leg is often going to be stronger but more susceptible to repetitive stress if you adopt this lifestyle without taking into consideration the difference between the strength of your right leg versus the strength of your left leg. So your right leg can probably do the single leg uh, hip bridge pretty easily, but if you try it, and you're right-handed, if you try it with your left leg, you may feel like it's a much more challenging exercise. But I do want you to try it because whatever you do on your right leg, you should also do with your left leg. Okay, two more exercises. The last one on the floor is for you to turn over and get yourself into downward facing dog. Downward facing dog is a very standard yoga pose that helps stretch out the back of your leg, stretches out your, your, your back a little bit as well and your butt, but it really helps elongate through the hamstrings and your calf muscles which are also integral to the success of any active lifestyle so you're going to take five deep breaths in your downward facing dog position and just think about the position of your the straightness of your legs you don't want a bend in your knee whether your heels are touching the floor or not, you should feel the back of the leg stretching both at the hamstring level height as well as the, the calves. And if you, you know, find this uncomfortable because your wrists are weak, then, then go ahead and stop. 
But if you can stay there for another couple of seconds, that's great. And then any amount of time that you feel like you can spend in this position, especially towards the end of the day, if you've been moving around a little bit and you have some interest in relaxing your body, this is a really, really great pose to practice. You know, as I said before, like I do, which is basically relaxing with the pose, but listening to the crazy news in our world. Okay, the last exercise that I'm going to let you go is to stand up and you're going to try something called a forward reach. The forward reach is one of the exercises that we do for runners that really helps activate the butt. And with this exercise, if you don't have great balance, you want to hold on to something. You stabilize your weight on your right leg. You hold on to maybe the back of a chair or a bar or your wall with your right hand. And then lift your left hand up into the air. So you're going to hinge at your hip. You're going to keep your leg, your right leg straight. You're going to bend your body over reaching your left hand towards the floor very slowly. The key to this exercise is actually the tempo, is your pacing. You want to, if you can, touch the floor or maybe touch your shin, your right shin with your left hand. And then as slowly as you possibly can, you keep your torso completely flat and straight. You lift your body back up you write yourself back into your fully erect position and complete two to three maybe even if you're if you're going out for a longer run uh, five of these on each of your legs again whatever you do with your right leg you have to do the same with your left leg and with that I will say goodbye to you have a great rest of the day enjoy your activities and let me know how it goes remember This was a really basic exercise regimen. We did high knee marching. We did cross body marching and a little bit of skipping. Two 30 second planks, a hip bridge, downward facing dog, and the forward reach at the end. I'm Coach Kim from InShape Fitness. I will see you again soon.